Welcome to another edition of Believe in Saints. I'm David Grubb, and as always, I am with Terrence Copper. TC, man, we're coming off a long, a little extra time for the Saints after that really, really disappointing road loss to the Cardinals to drop the Saints to 2-5. and five. First, um, let's let's look back real quickly on that game. Um, you know, obviously, it, it feels like it was lost late in that, at that first quarter. The back-to-back pick sixes to end the mm-hmm. first half – really just changed the landscape of the game. But it just, it felt again. The Saints kind of got off to a good start against the Cardinals, but that energy, that 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 fire, it just seems like even when things were going good, there's an element missing from this team. Did you see that? Uh, you know, what I've seen was, I've seen that it was some good play calling early in the game. Uh, honestly, the play calling wasn't bad at all throughout the entire game. Uh, but, it goes back to everything we've been talking about since we've been covering them this uh, this season. We're doing the things that allow bad teams to get beat. Uh, and that's offensively for, for this game right here, turning the ball over. We had three picks, one of them in the end zone, two of them pick sixes. You know, so that's basically three touchdowns, two that we gave them and one that we was about to score and we gave it to them and turned it over. And defensively, we're just still giving up too many explosive plays. We don't tackle well in the back end, and we're giving up too many explosive plays. So if you add all those things up, it doesn't matter what, again, what the roster looks like. One thing Bill Parcells used to always say, we are what our records say we are. And and it don't matter what we're looking at. It doesn't matter how talented we are. We are what the records say we are. And the big thing was Alvin Kamara coming out and basically having a closed-door meeting where he was the leader. And this isn't something that he does. He's not a guy who spends a lot of time talking. He is a a by-example kind of player. You know that he's Mm going to compete on Sundays. You know he's going to work his behind off in practice. We've seen the the workout tapes in the summer of what he does to stay in shape and and keep himself physically as, as balanced and as talented as any running back we've seen. But for him to speak up and say, this is not the Saints that I know. Like, you know, we don't look at the scoreboard and say, what's going on? We go out there and we go, we got to go get touchdowns. This is what we do as an offense. We get touchdowns. And for a guy like him, and I think that, you know, certainly he has the respect of that locker room. There's nobody who's been there, you know, more than a year who doesn't have you know, respect Alvin Kamara. But for him to say that, and again, to say it's, it's penalties, it's this, it's that, it's not us, the talent. It's not the fact that we don't have enough ability. It's all up here and it's inside. You know, I think that that speaks volumes because he knows his guys and he knows the standard that's been expected. So for him to speak out seven weeks into the season, I think, you know, either this is a turning point where guys heard it. And I'm not saying that, you know, they didn't know that they weren't playing well before. But, you know, either you take this message and you start moving forward with it or do we see the same level of emotion? What do, what do you stand on now? You know what I think? One thing that I think that I hope that didn't happen, but it seems like it did, it feels like we ate the cheese. And when I tell you that we always talk about don't eat the cheese, don't believe what everybody's saying. And I feel like at the beginning of the season uh, with our roster, the way our roster was shaping up and everybody was counting us to go deep into the playoffs. Uh, This was our Super Bowl year because of the roster. I feel like we kind of ate the cheese. I feel like we kind of listened to it too much. And forgot about, that. listen, yeah, we do have this roster. We do have this talent. But at the end of the day, we still have to go out there and put the work in. Not saying that we're not putting the work in, but the way we're going about our business is not the right way to do it when it comes to winning these games. Because teams aren't going to lay down just because we have this roster, just because we are the Saints. They're not going to lay down for us. You know, so we still have to go out there and play the game the way we're supposed to play. Uh, and right now, we're not doing that. We're not playing with fire. Uh, we're not playing with enthusiasm. Like I said, it seems like we're waiting for something to go wrong, even when things are going right, you know, and that's what it feels like. And they're not building off the things when they do go right. You know, like you said, they, it's it, it's not necessarily the play calling, because like you said, I think generally the play calling has been good, but it's some of that recognition. Like you get the big play to Shahid again. You get him, you know, two touches, two touchdowns. And again, you don't see him again. You don't see him get utilized the rest of the game. And one of the other things, too, that you, we, we've talked about now for a couple of weeks, 
Two weeks ago, when you get the big win, the amount of Taysom touches. Again, against the Cardinals, Taysom with under 10 touches for the game. And two of those touches are passes. One of those passes is really a big play. But again, only seven touches with the ball actually in his hands to, to do something with it. And a lot of those were not in those designed run situations for him. I just think it's it's unusual in that you have this weapon that we all know you want, that you need to use and want to use, but it feels like the last two weeks he hasn't gotten the touches necessarily that that, that maybe you'd want to see for Taysom. Definitely. Um, I thought, speaking on Shahid, is it Shahid or Shahid? Which one is it? I can't pronounce it correctly. I think, yeah, I think you, I, I want to say Shahid, but it might be yeah. Shahid. <laughs> Trust me, he's going to get more touches this week right here. Like I say, the first week on the jet sweep, like he's just coming off practice squad. Uh, okay, let's let's put the ball in his hands one time. Let's see what he can do. All right, he scored. Well, we didn't have anything else schemed up for him because we didn't expect for him to score on that. You know, he's coming off practice squad. Next week, okay, let's put another play in for him and see what happens. He scores. Now, this week, we know he's a threat. We know he has potential. Guys that usually come out and they first two touches and score big-time touchdowns the way he did, they usually end up being very successful in the NFL. I think now, Pete, everybody else knows, okay, we have a valuable weapon on this team and this guy. Now let's start giving him more playing time. Let's start scheming more things up for him. You're going to see this week his touches or his attempts are going to go up through the roof probably. he probably get at least about eight attempts or eight touches or eight uh, targets, targets at least this year, uh, this, this game coming up. When it comes to Taysom Hill, like I said, I feel like this game right here, we got away from it. I think – I really think those pick sixes kind of tighten us up a little bit. And I think it got – I think we got away from – uh, the game plan of what we had going into it. I feel, I feel like we supposed to gave him more touches because not seeing him in the game late like it was, it was so unusual, you know? So I'm like, why is it, why isn't he in the game? The only thing I can come up with is our play calling had to change because of the pick sixes and the way the game was going. Uh, and I just don't know if they had anything, they had anything schemed up for him with the play calling, especially how the game was going. So hopefully we can add something back to it for him. And we have to keep him in the game plan because he is our guy, regardless of who we have on that roster. Taysom Hill is our game changer. He And he's shown that he can make big plays when you are pressing up against the run, even when against stack boxes, because he's one of those guys, if he gets through that first line, he's shown that he has the breakaway speed, even at his size, to put together long runs. So it's like you, you just want to see that consistency in his usage. And I think he does. He does, too. Because uh, it, it helps when you prepare that you know, I'm going to get 15 touches today. I know that. I know mm -hmm. I'm going to get mine. And I think that, that it helps everybody in that regard. But then this is still a feeling out process in some ways. Um, it's still kind of nerve-wracking, though. We, seven weeks now, and Alvin Kamara still ain't touched that end zone. Uh. Got to find a way to get them. And, he's, and, he, and again, I know the game plan changes. But he still only had 19 touches in that ball game. And he wasn't getting a ton of them even early. It wasn't, they weren't using a lot of Alvin early. They went deep, you know, and got the big play and did some of those things. But he really, you know, it's, he's got to, you've got to put the ball in your playmaker's hands. To me, this guy, I definitely agree with you on that because he is our playmaker. The ball needs to be in his hands. I definitely agree with that. But to me, it wasn't, when I'm watching that game, it wasn't so much of, the play calling and who's touching the ball because we were scoring. True. You know, we, we were scoring. But offensively, when it comes down to those three interceptions, and again, it wasn't about the fact it was a there's just three interceptions. All three of them was very crucial. The first one, like we talked about earlier, the first one, we're ready. We're about to score. We, we throw a pick in the end zone. Triple coverage in exactly. the end zone. Exactly. In the end zone. And the other two were pick sixes, you know. So to me, it wasn't about the fact about, you know, this player not getting the ball because we're actually moving the ball. And we're actually scoring. But those three turnovers, that killed us offensively. That killed the momentum. Uh, it killed our chances of scoring and gave them two touchdowns. You know, so. For a team that had really me, been struggling too. That been struggling. 
you know, so to get a boost like that from your defense and for your defense to get a stop in the end zone with another pick, that's tough, man. The the, the division is still up for grabs. You know, it's weird that's, to be two and crazy. five. You're two <laughs> and five and you're a game back in that's this crazy. division. And it tells you how weird this NFL season has been because we're looking at Tom Brady hasn't been three and four in any season since he was a long time ago with the Patriots. Um I don't think Aaron Rodgers, he's three and four. They've he's never been three and four in his entire career as a starter. I mean, we look around the league and there's in the in the NFC East is legitimately the only division where you look at it and you go, Yeah, this is you know, this is a good division. I don't know how it got to be good. I don't know how the Giants got to be good. I don't know how this is happening the way it is, but outside of that, the NFC in particular. I don't know what a good team is in that in this division. I don't know what a good team is supposed to be. So the Saints are still in it, which is the weird part. But they got to start picking up these home wins. Here's another chance at home. You're one and three at home this season. The Raiders come in. Yeah, they're two and four, but they've won two out of the last three. And the loss to Kansas City was a one possession game. So and, and you look at the Raiders throughout this season. They've lost a lot of one score games. So they're, they are not a team that at two and four that you, well, you can't take anybody lightly when you're two and five, but you certainly can't take these Raiders lightly. And again, the other part of it is too, another elite receiver that you're going up against in Devontae Adams, who the Saints have had struggles, struggles with containing number one receivers. True. And, and one thing the Raiders are doing in these, this last three game stretch, like so they lost by one point to Kansas City. They've been running the ball. Uh, the games they're lost, they have lost. They haven't, besides the Kansas City game, they haven't gotten over 100 yards rushing. Uh, these last three weeks, this little stretch they've been going on, they've been rushing for over 100 yards and also throwing uh, throwing the ball very well as well. So they've been very balanced these last three weeks, and they haven't been turning the ball over either these last three weeks. And that is why they're being competitive. That is why I feel like they're playing their best stretch of football right now. And it's very concerning that we have to be we have to be ready to play this team because they have a big old strong, powerful back and they have an elite receiver that can go get it. So we definitely have to be ready to play. This is going to be a physical game and teams this season have realized that's the best way to attack the Saints is to be extremely physical with them, either with your offensive line, which the Raiders have a big offensive line or with your receivers who have size. And the Saints are going to, you know, Roby is now on the uh, injured reserve list. Uh, Paulson Adebo limited in practice. Marshawn Lattimore out of practice. So that secondary again is going to be shorthanded in a in big ways, not just in its depth, but at its top end talent. It's a big challenge for the Saints. Uh, it's definitely a big challenge. It's def- it, it'll be a big challenge even if we had all of our DBs healthy. Uh, and the fact that we're down the way we're down and they're already struggling back there in the back end, to me, I don't see that changing. I don't see that changing right now, uh, and that's just being honest. Uh, you got some young guys back there, and they're struggling. Uh, you got some guys that we're expecting to make plays, you know, and they're struggling. I don't see it changing this game right here. Uh, I just don't see it changing. I want it to change. You hope for it to change, but I just don't see it. We don't We don't have our guys. You know, we're, we're not healthy. And some of the guys that are healthy needs to play better in the secondary. Uh, so – but I don't see it changing right now. Uh, I don't see it changing until – I don't know. I just don't see it changing. And, you know, and I, I can't even get into when it's going to change. I just don't see it. And the other thing has been, you know, at the start of the season, Derek Carr was under pressure. He's not getting that pressure right now. And the Saints have not been able to generate a ton of pressure um, with the defensive line only. So this is a game, again, where you might have to blitz, which puts your secondary – in a lot of one-on-one situations. So it's the Saints have to avoid those situations. They've got to win first down consistently. And, it, and you know, again, the third down, we talked about this week in and week out, getting off the field on third downs for the Saints has been an issue. They, they cannot allow it to be one this weekend. No, not, not, if, we're gonna, not if we're trying to win this game. Uh, we, got to get off, we have to get off the field. First of all, we got to stop the run. We ha- I, can't, I can't say that enough. We have to stop the run and make them one-dimensional. If we can't make them one-dimensional and just start throwing the ball, then because if you make them one-dimensional, then you can start playing with them a little bit, trying to confuse the quarterback on different blitz you may do, uh, maybe some zone blitz, uh, just different things that you can kind of do certain things when they just 
They just have to throw the ball because they can't run it. But if we cannot make them one dimensional, it will be a long game because that is what they're priding themselves on these last three weeks is being able to do both. And they have a good match, a good mesh of running the ball and throwing it as well. And Derek Carr is a check down quarterback. He doesn't like to take risks if they're not there. And, and I think that that mitigates some of that opportunity for turnovers potentially, because if he doesn't see something in his read, which is usually Devontae Adams is his first read. If he doesn't, mm-hmm. he's, he's not going to try to force something. He's going to check down. He's going to look for his back. He's going to look for his tight end and just try to get whatever's there. So, I mean, it's a really important for the Saints to get there early with that pressure. Let me ask you something. In, in, your, in your mind, coverage-wise, what would you do to Adams? I think you have to have, you know, you have safety help over the top all the time. And you've mm-hmm. got to try to force him to go to run underneath routes more than you're allowing him to, to go over the top because the Saints have been giving up these big plays. So I'd much rather see somebody try to beat me running after the catch than trying to chase him in the air because that's been the issue is with the coverage. So let me at least force him. If you're going to get the completion, fine. But I can at least give me an opportunity to have Pete, have Demario in space make a tackle where I feel a lot more comfortable than putting my, my secondary in one-on-one situations. I definitely agree with that. Because uh, Devontae Adams, man, he's he's known for big playmaking uh, down the field. Like I said, down the field. He's also known for his run, his run after the catch. Uh, he's definitely going to be a guy that you're going to need safety help over the top. We cannot go one-on-one with him, with anybody on our roster uh, right now, unless you had Lattimore that was ready. Uh, and he's not. So – we shall see. We shall see. We learned this week about Jameis Winston. And, of course, you know, Dennis Allen says he's going, that Jameis is healthy, but he's going with Andy Dalton. But Jameis isn't really healthy. You know, now that we, we hear about the um, the ruptured uh, tendon in his foot, to have that, and they're saying, you know, that's a, clearly for a quarterback. We, and we talked about this earlier in the season when we saw that his planting didn't look right. And this apparently happened during the Tampa game. But – between the back issue, the fractures there, and this the torn tendon in the foot, I don't see how he was able to play as – I mean, if you look at the numbers now, they're not that much different. And in some places, they're better than what Andy was putting up. And he was doing that really hurt. I just, I just feel so bad for Jameis in that regard is that in two seasons in New Orleans where he's had opportunities to play, we've never gotten to see him fully healthy. But we've seen the flashes of that talent that made him a number one pick it's just it, it it I hurt for him. Yeah, yeah, you definitely hurt for him because this was his year to really last year was his year, but he got injured and he started out great last year. Uh this year was his year to step in and really take this team to the next level. And because of injury, we're not seeing uh the Jameis Winston that we wanted to see. And and the crazy thing about that is what that gonna do what that's gonna do is that's gonna that's almost gonna force the Saints to actually draft another quarterback. Uh, it's going to force you to because right now your quarterback position is not stable. It's not stable because of injury. and But it was because of injury last year as well. So you don't have two years in a row where your quarterback position hasn't been stable because of injury. Now it's almost going to force them to draft another quarterback to shore up that position. Uh, and like I said, you hate it for, for Jameis because he's a great leader and he's been putting work in to get back on the field to lead his team. But again, injury that he cannot, he can't help, you know? So like I said, you feel bad for him because of the situation. Um, the other part, you know, uh, just you look at this injury list from top to bottom, Andrews Pete limited, Ryan Ramchick limited, um, and and then Michael Thomas, we know Landry's still out, Troutman out. Again, this is could be a very shorthanded offense and defense. The Saints cannot keep affording to get into shootouts. Every time these games are played in the 30s, to me, it's heavily to their disadvantage. Like with, with Drew Brees at the helm, you want to get in a shootout, I'll live with it. You know, I figure you're gonna get enough touchdowns to to be there. But with this group. Like with the amount of penalties, turnovers, all those things, the the more points that are scored, the margin for error to me gets narrower and narrower for this team. They have to, to me, keep this game, again, run the clock, keep the scores low, 
stay on the field as much as possible and keep your opponent off as much as possible. It's I'd like to see the Saints maybe take on a little bit more of a power identity offensively than, yeah, the big plays are going to be there. Take your chances when they're there. But like to me, with the limited roster, you got to beat these folks with the hammer rather than trying to go by death by a thousand cuts. Definitely. And and the reason why you can't, like you say, you can't get into shootouts is because we're not we're not consistent enough right now. Offensively, we don't know what offense is going to come out. You know, is is the offense going to come out? The offense we had at the beginning of the year, we couldn't really score the first half. Or the offense is going to come out that has been put, kind of putting points up the last couple of weeks. Is that offense going to come out? Or is the defense going to come out that was earlier in the season that was really holding the team together, the defense, because the offense wasn't doing too much? Or we're going to get this defense that we've been getting here lately that's been giving up a ton of explosion plays, uh, explosion plays, uh, uh, missing a ton of tackles in the secondary. We don't know which team is going to show up. You know, we don't know if the offense is going to show up or the defense is going to show up. And that is the reason why it's tough to get in the shootout with teams because one of those sides, we don't know which one's going to show up. Did you – I mean, was there a time when the, when the Superdome wasn't a home field advantage? Because now this is the third game where the Saints have been at home and Vegas has them as the underdog. And this is it, – it, to me, it's unprecedented because it's not the fans. They're there. Mm-hmm. They're making noise. But people aren't scared to come into the Superdome right now. No, they're not. And you know what? I want to say this happened probably my last year in New Orleans. I want to say 08. 08, I don't think we start, We was playing well in the Superdome in 08. It was 08 or 07, one of those two, uh, where we had some teams coming into the Superdome. Yeah, I think that was, that was a seven, that seven and nine year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, but that was the year, the last I can remember, where you know, the teams really wasn't afraid to come to the Superdome to play. Uh, and this year is starting to feel the same way. You know, the home field advantage is still there. It's just the fact we're not playing well. Whether, whether we go on the road or whether we come home, we're not playing well. And I'm going to tell you a team we got to be very careful about because uh, we was talking about it earlier about the the division being open. Carolina. The Carolina Panthers, the fact they had, is it P.J. Walker, mm-hmm. the quarterback? Right. I liked him from the jump. Even when Cam came back off the couch, he was starting before Cam uh, came back. And he was winning games. And then they benched him, you know, for Cam. So I've always liked P.J. Walker. And they just in, they went ended up winning last week. You know, so having those guys back in the mix, uh, they got a new head coach. So they're going to start rallying around the guy they have now as the, in, as the interim. You know, but that team is a team that could really come out and do pretty and do pretty well in this division because their defense is still uh, doing a great job. But offensively, now they have a spark. The fact they got a new quarterback that, that used to play well anyway when he was playing. Trust me, the team when they got a quarterback that's sitting on the bench and they know he can play, and now he's getting his shot to play again. Trust me, the team is going to rally behind him because they like him anyway. Yeah, and Carolina's you know again they're right there. They're only one game out of first. And they still have the, the overwhelming majority of their division games ahead of them. Mm-hmm. And yep. that is to their advantage, too, because like you said, they get this they get this early season to knock all these kinks out. They've had the coaching change. They get to figure they've made the McCaffrey trade. They get to set their new identity for their final 10 games and figure out who they are and prime themselves for a division that no longer knows who, who that they're dealing with. They mm-hmm. know who the Buccaneers are. They know who the Saints are. They know who the Falcons yep. are. But now none of those teams know who the who the Panthers are, and the Panthers are one up on the Saints. Yep. So, I mean, you look at it that way, yeah. I mean, and this is a division that 7-10 and 10 legitimately now is on the table to win this division. You got to say 7-10, mm-hmm. and 10, you could win this division. You could finish 3-3 three and three in the NFC South, win seven games total, and you might make the playoffs this year. You, you really could. You really could. And I look, I know this is the Saints podcast, but Carolina is part of the division, you know. And to me, when I look at Carolina right now, they've lost the three guys, truthfully, to me, that has been hindering them anyway. The quarterback, Baker Thank Mayfield, mm-hmm. the head coach. And if you really want to get technical about it, Christian, Christian McCaffrey as well, because he's mm-hmm. been so injury prone. 
that he hasn't been there anyway. Now this year he's been uh, more durable, but for for his career he hasn't been he hasn't been healthy throughout his career. So if you even though you look at McCaffrey as a huge asset, you got three guys that just got out of the building that's kind of been hindering them anyway. You know, so you just don't know what Carolina's going to do moving forward. They could be a real good team moving forward that we really got to we really got to uh, handle our business about. They have interesting pieces. You can't. They they I mean, do. they have depth at the running back spot. They even with the loss of Robbie Edison, who they traded to, they still have some very good receivers. They got a good tight end. They have a decent offensive line. That defense has shown that it's not giving up big, big points on a week to week basis. And they've got some young, really talented players. I mean, yeah, they're, at this stage, they are dark horse. And I'm, and you can't even really, you can't really talk that poorly about Atlanta either, because no. considering what they are and what the expectations were for them to, for them to be sitting there at three and four, Atlanta still got to figure we, they have a legitimate shot. I mean, like to me, the only team that that really, you know, the, the, the Saints and the Buccaneers are the ones who are really frustrated with where they're sitting because they mm-hmm. neither one of them expected to be here. But if but considering everything, yeah, the Bucks and the Falcons have to both be saying, we can steal this thing. Yeah. Yep. It's it's wide open, man. It is wide open. Uh, but we need to take advantage of these games while we can. We need to go and start stacking these wins up. But it ain't about stacking the wins. Let's just take it one game at a time. <laughs> <laughs> Forget stacking. That's too far away. Yep. Let's okay, just, stack till you get one. <laughs> exactly. Let's just get one. Uh, and let's start this week right here. Just just give me four quarters, man. That's all. Give me four quarters of solid football and let the chips fall where they may. Right. And if we could come back, you know, next week and talk about, hey, man, they played their behinds off for 60 minutes, win or lose, but you saw something out of this team, I would take that. Then if they sneak by, and yeah, the, the win is important, but if they sneak by and win this game but still commit – two turnovers and have seven penalties and make mistakes and somehow find a way to get past the Raiders. It's fine to get that dub, but you're not a better team than you were before you walked in the door. Right. You need to see a better team this week. True. That's true. And like I said, and like I said, in the NFL, there is no bad victories. Uh, there's no bad victories, but the way we've been playing, you know, you want to see us play better. Not because, it's more about the process than the outcome right now for the Saints when we're talking about longevity. Yes. Uh, it's, more, it's more about the process. The process is let's do things that we, the way we need to do things uh, that good team does, not bad teams. Uh, that's part of the process. So not really looking at the outcome. I think, like you said, if the process gets corrected, I think the outcome will show for itself. It'll be repeatable. And yeah. that's the thing. You can't repeat. A fluke win, and there are you know if you play bad and win, you can't you don't want to repeat that. You know? Exactly, <laughs> <laughs> this is bad habits. Uh, before we go, you know how we do. Um, who do you think is going to be the breakout player this week, and what's your prediction for the game? He <laughs> he's going to be the breakout. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you cannot be this guy and get two catches, two touchdowns. But it was both over, what, 40 yards? Yeah, he's got a 40 – it was 40 – what was a 46-yard run and a 53-yard catch. So you can't be that type of guy, two catches or two touches, two touchdowns, long touchdowns at that, and not have your offensive coordinator start scheming stuff up for you. You know, not even just putting him in on certain plays, like actually having him on the field in the mm-hmm. rotation. You know, so – that's my breakout player. I am going – man, I'm going to tell you something. I got the Raiders winning by three. I got it 21-24 Raiders. That's I, what I have. I think I got to ride – until the Saints prove it, I mean, I, I think it's hard to pick them right now. And we, we we rode with the Saints all season. We haven't really picked yeah. against them. But it's yeah. just been hard – at this point, to, to to do that. So, yeah, I'm with you. I'm going to say 21-17 Raiders. Um, yeah, just it, it – until we see some consistency out of the Saints, it's just you can't you can't count on it. You yeah. Um, but hopefully we're wrong. Hopefully we're wrong. And they got 60 yep. minutes on, on Sunday to prove us wrong. And I'll, I will be glad to talk to you on Monday and say mm-hmm. that I was wrong. I'll be glad Me to too. do it. I, I want to be wrong. <laughs> I want to be wrong. 
brother, thank you for your time. I appreciate you. Tell the folks real quick how they can keep up with you and all the good things that you're doing. I mean, you can find me on Instagram uh, at Terrence Copper. You can find me on Twitter at T Copper 10, um, Facebook as well. You know, those are ways you can find me. All right, brother. And y'all know how to catch me at DM Grub on Instagram and Twitter. And of course, um, at HITPwithDG.com. Until the next time, this has been Believe in Saints brought to you by Bet Online. Go Saints, please. <laughs> <laughs>